What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. I got my live tavy. We're being interrupted. You bring a fucking pink one into my house? You want a yellow one? Those are the only ones I wanted. Well, I'm not. This motherfucker comes in and disrespects me. We're 18 seconds into the video. And I'm, re I'm getting ready to fucking go off. I'm about to have these comments saying go off, King. Because I think you're bringing in a yellow fucking Laffy Taffy. Well, the pink's the best one. When you start a fantasy football show, you can choose which Laffy Taffies are the best. Until then, get your ass back over there and get a banana Laffy Taffy. We're going to enjoy the pink Laffy Taffy. Y'all are going to enjoy the video ahead. We've officially partnered with Underdog for the 2021 season. Number one place in the world. In the internet. Would you consider the internet? TJ, spiritual. Would you consider the internet inside the world? You're like, you know, you say something's the best in the world. Would you consider like the internet inside the world? Well, you've heard it here. Confirmed internet is inside the world. Underdogfantasy.com. Single best platform in the world, in the internet, which is all encompassing apparently. I gotta stop chewing. We're gonna do a 2021 fantasy football draft on Underdog Fantasy. It's the only platform that you will see me drafting on this entire summer. It's the only platform I will be referencing ADP on. It's a partner with Big Dogs for the entire year. So if you want to draft with us, if you want to get the most accurate information, you've got to sign up on Underdog Fantasy. The first link down below is going to take you straight to the app store to download it. They are number one in our hearts. They're soon to be number one in your phones. And we're going to get into the draft in about five seconds. First, we're going to tuck our shirts in. Everybody stop yelling, including you, TJ. Let's eat. All right, y'all. Welcome, bike. We're doing 12-teamer. It's $3 entry. Thing to know about the underdog fantasy drafts is that they are indeed not free. All right? So peasants are not allowed on, onto this website. Um, so that basically knocks off all the Android users, although they do have it on Android. So you can download via Android, you can download via iOS. So I suggest y'all do that immediately. One of the coolest things that they just rolled out are these private drafts. So I can actually grab this link. I can throw it on Twitter. I'm going to throw it into the discord first, best ball draft starting now. So this is a, basically a BGE only draft. So if you want to start drafting with myself or other members of the familia join the discord make sure you're following on twitter make sure you sign up for the text platform the numbers down below as well that's well starting right now i'm gonna tweet this out real quick give me a minute and then we'll see this bad boy fill up i'll throw it up on the twitter three dollar best ball draft on under oh this shit's filling up quick i don't even know if i've tweeted out just tweet it out oh it's already filled oh we got our fucking swagger back we got the swag we fucking throw out the link and two seconds later it's filled i can't wait to tweet that out eight seconds ago filled don't fucking bother coming to the show picking from the 105 12 teamer and the platform that they have set up it's a beautiful beautiful platform half ppr best scoring format in the world one quarterback one tight end so you're only starting one of each two running backs three wide receivers if you haven't played best ball that's what this format is okay basically takes the best part of fantasy it's just the drafting you don't worry about waiver wire shit you don't got to worry about in the middle of the season type of roster management bullshit all the stuff that you hate doing tuesday night comes around midnight and you're like fuck i gotta wake up for work tomorrow but it's important to put my waiver wires in none of it matters because you don't got to do that here all you do is draft and you take advantage this early in the off season because the nfl draft ain't happening so we can hit the rookies hard we can hit the values hard you know guys like fucking uh Miles Gaskin, do you want to roll the dice on him? We don't know. Let me uh, minimize Twitter so my distractions are... I'm completely focused on you, my beautiful, beautiful big dogs. Okay, so you pick a big-ass team, 18 players, 18 players, and uh, and it starts the best players at each position for you each and every week. And then you come back and win your money in January. So you got a fat, fat, fat bag sitting in your account. I had one hundred eighty-three dollars right, right there. I probably lost money last year. I probably joined two hundred seventy-five drafts, so probably shouldn't listen to me. So listen to my player advice. Don't don't worry about my teams. You guys always talk shit about my teams in the long run. Like I'm trying to entertain you, I'm trying to have a good time, I'm trying to party a little bit, and then all of a sudden I auto draft every pick. All right, so we got C Mac, we got Dalvin Cook. The one hundred two is going to be a little interesting this year, man. I think personally, I might roll it safe and go with Derrick Henry, depending on what happens with Kamara and the quarterback situation in New Orleans. But no argument at one on one with C Mac. Uh, I understand the the infatuation with Dalvin Cook, given his upside. He's a, he's a guy who can basically score as high as C Mac on a points per game basis. Uh, but the injury history, man, is, it's there. It's every single year. It's the same thing. He wears down at the end of the season. 
You know, is he injury prone? Apparently it's not a thing, but I don't know. I'm only technically a doctor here. So Cook, I don't know. For the injury concern, he's probably someone I uh, move a little bit down the board just from a safety perspective. So Derrick Henry might be my two right now. The uh, season-long rankings won't drop probably until like June or something. That shit doesn't matter right now. Alvin Kamara after him. Saquon Barkley at the 104. No surprise there. Wow, Aaron Jones at the 106. That's interesting. That's the highest I've seen him go. That's probably, that's That's got to be the highest we'll see him go all summer. He re-signs with Green Bay. He gets the fat bag, but AJ Dillon's still there, man. He was a second round pick. He got some play last year, and uh, and I don't know if I could take Jones that high. They do lose Corey Lindsley, their center. He's going over to the Chargers now. Big upgrade for Austin Eckler. Big upgrade for uh, J- Justin Herbert. He was the highest graded offensive lineman on the market in the offseason. So could be an underlying move here that that swings the pendulum a little bit on on the Aaron Jones versus Austin Eckler debate, which is not a debate. I just kind of made that up. I don't know why I did that, but. Aaron Jones, 106, a little, a little bit risque for me. I would take Chubb. Oh, we got Georgie Memes in here, even though your name's not Georgie Memes anymore. You're Georgie Cards, Georgie Basement Sports Cards. Make sure you're following Georgie on Instagram, at Basement Sports Cards. He's putting in work over there, paying the mortgage with them flips. Uh, he grabs Chubb. Chubb's a guy I'm kind of all in on, man. Uh, there's just no no downside to Chubb, I feel like. I mean, he proved over the last half of the year, even with Kareem Hunt there. They're a team that goes, I mean, first first year under Kevin Stefanski, man. High play action rate. Their offensive line, yo, literally the highest ranked offensive line run blocking per PFF in the NFL. Jack Conklin, Tristan Wirfs, like they've revamped their entire offense. First year in the new offensive scheme, Baker's going to make it rain this year. I mean, he's not going to be a high volume guy, but that's what we want for Nick Chubb. We want a high, a run first, great run blocking line, tons of carries, tons of goal line opportunities. They were 13th in the NFL in scoring last year. I expect them to crack the top 10 this year. Really, really excited for Nick Chubb. So 107 is a perfect spot. I cannot argue with him probably going as high as, you know, where the Derrick Henry tier is. I probably 106 is, is probably the right spot for Chubb. I think that's probably where we'll end up uh, seeing him flop like a little fish. Jonathan Taylor to 108. It's a nice little spot. I think you can argue Taylor all the way up there, um, despite Wentz coming in. So I, I would still take Taylor over Aaron Jones. I'd probably take him over Nick Chubb, too, just because he's got so many fucking explosive plays up his sleeve. Uh, Travis Kelsey at the nine. I'm just not in the mood for taking tight ends in the first round. I probably won't take them in the second round either, just because in best ball, in best ball, you can you can construct your roster a little bit different. You can pull a little twang to it. You don't got to go with tight ends early because you can draft two or three of them. Again, the software automatically starts the best players at each position each week. So if you grab you know two, three back end tight end ones, you know in the tight end eight, nine, thirteen range or some shit like that. They're going to start the best one. And there's a good chance that one of them scores a touchdown, right? So you're getting, you're getting like, obviously you're not getting Travis Kelsey numbers, but you don't got to spend the first round fucking pick on him. Um, so Kelsey's that's, it's a little too high for me in the first round. Zeke. Uh, I was one of the first guys to come out and say, like, I really like Zeke this year, but I thought he was going to be dropping to like the mid end of the second round. Now he's back up to that first round pick where my big concern for Zeke, you know, Dak's going to be back in the lineup. So we're liking Dallas there. We're liking the offense. They're going to be explosive. They're going to move the ball a lot. And plus, he was getting targeted like a motherfucker last year for the first five games. He was on pace for like 85 targets or something. My big concern is that I'm going to auto-pick a fucking guy right now. So let me uh, let me pay attention real quick. No, we're not going tight end that early. Wide receivers. Man, I kind of like A.J. Brown, man. I kind of like A.J. Brown at the back end of the second round. He keeps calling my name. Keeps whispering sweet nothings to me. He's just so damn smooth. We're going off at A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown's going to be, I feel like, my most drafted guy at the end of the second round. Corey Davis is gone. Jonah Smith is gone. Like, where else are they going to throw the fucking ball to? Derrick Henry literally has feet for hands. I don't know. Like, what? what, I'd imagine Tannehill throws the ball, what, 450 times? A.J. Brown sees 422 of those targets. I'd imagine that's going to be a pretty, pretty big fucking year. Pretty big year. So AJ Brown there, uh, what was I talking about? What the fuck? Oh, Zeke. My biggest concern for Zeke is that offensive line, bro. Like Zeke is Zeke is what um what we like about Derrick Henry. Zeke is what we like about Nick Chubb. Zeke is what we like about Jonathan Taylor, except all three of those guys have home run ability, right? Those guys rip off 40, 50, 60 yard runs. Zeke doesn't do that shit. He he rips off a 20 yard run, gets tired, and falls to the fucking ground. His calorie counts a little too high to be up in that range with a tier of those guys. And if you don't have an, uh, an elite offensive line like Zeke has had for the first three, four years of his career, he's going to struggle because he's going to start putting up, you know, 4.1 yards per carry with no big, big, big time plays. So uh, I, I think I think the floor might be a little bit lower or the ceiling might be a little bit lower than 
people are going to start to hype him up to be. So we'll see. We'll see where Zeke settles right now. Um, I think very back of the first, probably in this like acres range is probably about the right spot for Zeke. You know, if you want to start off with safety, Adams, Tyree Kill, Cam Akers, all, this whole tier is really fucking polarizing. Uh, Akers, you got to love, I think, just the way he finished last year, like 25 touches a game, just silly, silly, silly type of volume. Uh, they prove, you know, I mean, they drafted him and they want to use him for the to be the workhorse. Now they bring in Stafford, so this offense is going to be fucking humming like a bee. The bees hum? No, they buzz. Humming like a what hums? TJ, what animal hums? Does anything hum? <laughs> Sl- we're we're humming like some sloths out here. We're 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 purring like some cats. All right. Um. Oh fuck! I'm on the clock. We are in the third round. And what kind of running backs are sitting on the ball? I tell you what, man, I, I kind of like Sanders. I like Clyde. I have a, I don't know, man. I'm getting an inkling that Najee Harris is going to go to Pittsburgh with the 24th overall pick. If that's the case, I feel like people are going to start drafting him in the early second round. And this is why I kind of like doing best ball drafts this early, though, because you can really capitalize on the advantage of rookies. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to roll the dice a little bit and go with Najee here at the 3 5. I haven't, I don't take a lot of the rookie running backs that early right now because. The uh, the ADP on underdog is just so fucking sharp. Wow, Travis Etienne at three six. That is that's bold. I can't get behind that. Just Mill, just do it again. Back to the drawing boards. George is gonna do something fucking erroneous here. What do you do, Patrick? Wow. So he goes Georgie. Georgie rips off Nick Chubb, which I like. George Kittle at eighteen. Mahomes at thirty one. So George Kittle is gonna be an interesting case because we don't know what the fuck the quarterback situation is gonna be there in San Fran. They're at the number three pick. They traded up, so they're obviously going with the quarterback there. Everything points towards Mac Jones. They went to his pro day. You know, although, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. That's usually what happens when it comes to draft season. And even like Schefter's tweeting out, they like Mac Jones. He's their third guy. But, you know, Justin Fields, listen, maybe you you trade it for the third overall pick. I feel like you know who it is that you want. You don't hope your guy falls to you there. You're not, you know, you're not deciding based on a fucking pro day workout which guy is going to tip the scales for you. So I feel like they knew who they wanted, and I feel like it's Mac Jones. So I don't think they're flipping to Justin Fields, but you know that changes the outcome for a guy like George Kittle a little bit. Um, I still think they're going to be a run-first offense. They have a lot of weapons there, so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about George. That's why I just kind of stay away from tight ends in the earlier rounds. There's always guys later, 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 later in the draft. But uh, but yeah, if y'all got if you guys have not signed up for Underdog yet, click the link down below. When you throw in ten bucks on your account, you know that rips off three, four drafts you could do. Make sure you put BDGE in the referral code. Let them know I sent you. And we could draft together. Once you do that, I think actually they're working on getting us a little symbol. So anyone who signs up with the referral code, we will be able to throw uh, the little BDGE logo into our AVI, which is going to be fucking dope. Um, so make sure you do that. And we'll we'll backtrack. We'll retrograde that shit. Retro, Mercury's in retrograde. Your fucking AVI on this site's about to be in retrograde. I don't think I'm using that word correctly, but it's neither here nor here. What do we got? Miles Sanders, Clyde. See, I, I see like Miles Sanders and Clyde in the same tier as James Robinson. And this this third round's a really interesting tier for running backs. Clyde was, listen, for, for all intents and purposes, I know you guys can throw out the raw numbers and be like, he had 1,100 yards as a rookie. He, he wildly disappointed. Like, he was not very good. He didn't score touchdowns. He didn't really catch passes. He was not what we expected. For like the consensus 101 and a guy who literally was like a top five or six overall pick, I don't want to hear that bullshit. He got 1,100 yards as a rookie. Well, he's, we're drafting him as someone who's a fucking vet. We're drafting him at the 105, 106. Perform like you're the fucking 105, 106. Get off my team. You know what I'm saying? So Clyde was wild disappointment. You want to go back to the well on it? They did not re-sign Damian Williams, which makes me a little, a little bit less hesitant to pull the trigger on a guy like Clyde. Uh, but still, he's not a target. He's not a guy I'm targeting. I would probably take Miles Sanders over Clyde. I still think Miles Sanders running behind Jalen Hurts this year. Um, their offensive line is going to be absolute shit, which is going to be a problem. But um, he's explosive, man. If he had just stayed healthy last year, if he had gotten a little bit of that mojo, kept a little bit of that momentum that he had um, before he got hurt, you know, he broke off that. He had a big, big game against Baltimore. He broke off the huge run against Pittsburgh. Then he went down, and the rest of the season was absolute shit. So I still think he would have uh, would have done some work there. Okay, we're up at the 4-8. Right now we got, let me move myself into the middle here so you could see less of me, which I'm sure everybody wants. Derrick Henry, Najee Harris, AJ Brown. Oh, we got the big boys. Nobody under 220 pounds allowed on my team. Damn, I really wanted to take CeeDee Lamb or DJ Moore. We're going to take DJ Moore here. Unless we timed out. Don't fucking, don't do it. Oh my God. 
Here we go again. I need to I need to like create a little drop, like a an audio drop. Every time I auto draft, it just shoots out, and it's it's something that's uh, something that we put the what's the word for it? What the fuck is the? Uh, I can't think of the auto word. Like you 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 turn the volume up. It's not volume. It's like uh, it doesn't fucking matter. I want something that blasts your eardrums. Every time I auto, if if I'm going through pain, I also want you to go through pain. That's what I'm trying to get at right now. But I'm not mad about CeeDee Lamb. I, th- I don't know. I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting on board with, with CeeDee Lamb in the fourth round. Where did Amari Cooper go off the board? All right. So I, I do think Amari Cooper should be the first one off the board in terms of the Dallas wide receivers. But they're getting picked at the exact same spot pretty much. Reason being is like, listen, CeeDee Lamb's a great player. But I do think his ceiling is a little bit a little bit capped right now as a, an exclusive slot player. Because I want to go over to P- PFF. We're going to look at some numbers. We're also going to go over Rotoviz to look at some splits over the first five weeks of the season to see what Cooper was doing. Because I know he was, I think we were signed in as, uh, yeah, we were signed in with Ray's accounts. Shout out to Ray. It's GOAT giving us the college login. Y'all don't know, underground, we all work together, so we don't have to pay anybody. The two wide receivers, we got two running backs. You also got to remember, you're starting three wide receivers. You're starting three wide receivers, so um, while... Running backs are obviously the most important position in fantasy. You want to make sure you got volume at the wide receiver position. I'm not on board with Adam Thielen. Justin Jefferson ate his fucking lunch money last year. I mean, he took his lunch money, ate his fucking lunch as well. And uh, I don't know. I'm just not on board with. I'm not. I'm not on board with Adam Thielen this year. Let's see, Woods, Galladay. Don't hate Woods. I really like Deontay Johnson. I'm gonna time the fuck out again. Nope. Oh, oh, motherfucker. Shit. Sometimes I think they're doing it for the content. I think the underdog team watches me, lets me time out, and then picks the players that I hate the fucking most just to see my reaction. Doing a good job. Whoever Whoever's spearheading that initiative is needs deserves a fucking raise. Okay, back to what were we looking at? Oh, we're looking at, I want to look at uh, slot snaps. See where CD was lining up. Not that it really matters. I mean, obviously you can produce in the slot, but I think your ceiling is a little bit capped there because you don't run as many deep like downfield seam routes so a lot more times you're you're picking up like six seven eight yard uh receptions as opposed to downfield those turn into like 11 17 yard reception kind of kind of gains you know so that's where i feel like the, the separation a little bit between cooper and and cd lamb comes in just the direction and the, the the a dot where you're getting them targets let's see by player slot okay so he ran six 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 god Shout out to Pushy T. 666 snaps out of 731. Let's bring up the trusted TI-83 calculator. 91.1% of his snaps from the slot. That's a lot. It's a high percentage. And let's look at Cooper's numbers over the first five weeks. Like, look at those numbers, bro. 17.8 PPR points. Almost eight receptions. 11 targets. 85 yards. Didn't score a lot, but imagine those those touchdowns were a little bit of an uptick. He's, he's probably borderline... He had to be borderline like top five fancy wide receiver over those first five weeks of the season, if not like top three. And let's look at CD now. So I get it, right? He's going to improve. He's now it's uh, second year in the offense. Didn't have to go through the COVID summer. He's got more time with the offense overall. While CD was balling too, but a lot less involvement. He had a few more touchdowns. He had a few more receiving yards. But in terms of receptions, it's more than two receptions fewer per game. Almost four targets fewer per game for for CD Lamb. So I still think Cooper is the guy there. Um, so I'm not gonna be t- I'm not gonna be getting fucking weird and and uh, and dumb and taking CD over Amari Cooper right now. Dynasty, obviously, it's a, it's no fucking brainer. You're taking CDs. It's the like top top eight guy. Um, for redraft though, don't don't make no damn sense to me. Okay, that doesn't make any fuck. George, what are you doing taking Odell? How many fucking years in a row we got to learn with this guy Odell? You know what? If you ever wake up feeling shitty about yourself, just know that there are people out there that have drafted Odell Beckham for the last four years consecutively. Odell Beckham. What do you think he's going to do? He's like fucking 35 years old. He hasn't played more than like two games in 42 years. Chase Claypool all the way down at uh, in round six, huh? What kind of running backs are we looking at? I really got to pay attention to the draft board sometimes, huh? TJ Hawkinson, man? We're going to leave him into the sixth round? Yeah, I'm going to take some TJ here. I don't know why. I'm just feeling it. Jared Goff coming in. I think he'll target the tight end. They got they have nothing there in Detroit. They got that fucking nothing. They let go of Marvin Jones. They let go of Kenny Galladay. 
Quintus Cephas. What, what, what the fuck is a Quintus Cephas? Danny Amendola, huge hit to the offense. He's not there anymore. Brashad Perriman. I do like Brashad. Probably only because he's on my dynasty team, but I don't actually like him, you know. As analysis to give to you guys, that would be uh what's like the what's like the you know, don't doctors have to like sign something where it's like I promise to give my patients the best possible treatment, you know? That's like what I have to do with you guys. Like I really want to tell you that I love Brashad Perriman, but like I wouldn't I wouldn't feel right pitching you the idea of Brashad Perriman, knowing I only like him for the wrong reasons. It's a personal thing. It's fine. Some of you guys still haven't downloaded the Underdog app, and it fucking shows. It's available on mobile. Their app is flawless. It's beautiful. I wish I could do these drafts on their app. I can when I'm not doing them live, but I obviously need to make some featured films for you guys. Oh, Steve's FaceTime me. Steve, I'm going to FaceTime him back right now. He's sitting on the beach right now, probably drinking margaritas. Steven, don't embarrass me in front of my friends. This is ridiculous. You think you know somebody. All right, DJ Chark, Chase Claypool, Raheem Mostert, Russell Wilson. So we had a we had a nice little run of quarterbacks there. Dak at five twelve, Lamar at six one, Herbert at six. I will continue to think Lamar Jackson is just like the most undervalued quarterback in these best ball drafts continuously, as well as Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts still behind Aaron Rodgers, huh? Guys, you got to understand that Aaron Rodgers' touchdown rate last year was like nine point eight percent. It it was probably like an all time season high, if not top five in the history of quarterbacks. There's just no fucking chance it comes anywhere near that. So his uh his fantasy season last year was fantastic, but stop taking him over like legitimate dual threat quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts. Okay, running backs. Everybody's everyone in the running back room fucking stinks right now. And I still like some of the wide receivers. Boyd, Boyd, I don't know. I like Boyd the last couple of years. I'm not, I don't know if I really want to start drafting him again. Robbie Anderson now with Sam Darnold. We'll wait on that. Marquise Brown, nah. Brandon Cooks. I kind of like Jerry Judy, man. I kind of like Jerry Judy a little bit, but it's probably a little bit high, and now we're going to fucking time out again. Did we get – hey, we finally got a fucking guy that I liked. So I like our wide receiver core so far. I like the entire team so far, actually. We got Derrick Henry and Najee Harris at running back. We got A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Adam Thielen, Tyler Boyd, and T.J. Hawkinson. So, again, the platform starts the best players each week at, the, at, the, at each position. All right? So – if I draft six wide receivers, eight wide receivers, whatever, the top three scorers at the position will be stalled. And at the end of the year, who's ever got the most points objectively between the 12 teams, I believe the top three teams all uh, all come away with some money. Oh, back to Odell. Anytime I get to shit on uh, Georgia, I love to do that. So four games in 2017, 12 games in 2018, and it was a shit season. Six, A full 16-game season, and he racked up 1,000 yards. Last year, he played seven games, like, racked up 300 yards. Like, what in what world does this trajectory say to you, I need to be picking Odell Beckham in round six? Can someone do a case study? Someone that's good with Excel? Someone that can literally just pick up a goddamn calculator can tell you that that's not the right move. Kyle Pitts at 7'6". Kyle Pitts is not a guy that I'm necessarily targeting early in best ball drafts. He's going he's gonna to get ridiculous draft capital. He's an awesome fucking player, but, like, listen, no rookie tight ends do well, statistically speaking. Damian Harris at seven. All right, George, you're, you're, making, up, you're making up for your fucking terrible Odell pick. I respect you. Barely. Damian Harris I really like. He's one of my favorite, like, mid-late round running backs right now. I think with Cam coming back, they're going to be running the ball heavy, heavy, Actually, I, I'm pretty sure the Patriots are going to... What's going to happen is it's going to go Trevor Lawrence at one. Zach Wilson at two to the Jets. Mac Jones at three. And then it's fucking no holds bar. I would be really surprised if both the Patriots and... I think the Patriots and the Broncos, however you shake it out, however the cookie crumbles, both of those teams are going to end up with, in one way or another, Trey Lance and Justin Fields. I feel like the Patriots are going to end up with Fields. I think that the Broncos are going to end up with Trey Lance. I don't know how. I don't know why, but that is my – that's my uh, – that's a factual guess. I've never been wrong before, so might as well fucking put that down in Sharpie. If they, if that's the case, then Cam's probably only under center for a little while. Matt Stafford, seven. Robbie Anderson. How are you guys feeling about Robbie Anderson, man? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, we, we can go through all the numbers we want. Robbie Anderson having – uh. Having Sam Darnold back, who's, you know, without a doubt going to win the, the starting quarterback job there. 
but like are, we're just extrapolating little numbers from here and there and a different offensive scheme and they had Robbie Anderson running a bunch of the slot routes I hope they put if they put DJ Moore in the slot that'd be fucking fantastic that's what he does man DJ Moore yeah he can win downfield but he's a yak god he's, he's a dude you just get the ball in his hands he puts asses in the seats and he puts defenders asses on the ground okay Visca Brandon Cooks uh, I kind of like Tony Pollard later on, though. Like, I don't like any of these dudes right now. Did I take it? Oh, oh, Jalen Hurts still sitting there at eight. What are y'all doing? I, you know, I'm not even going to waste my time going through the Jalen Hurts segment of this uh, of this draft. I do it every week. Every week we need to talk about how Jalen Hurts racks up like 28 fantasy points per game because he runs the ball like 28 times a game. It's simple. You do the math. Jalen Hurts, best value quarterback play. In the world, in the internet. So Cooks is obviously a guy. He was a guy early on when I started doing the best wall drafts. I was uh, I was a little bit excited about taking because I figured Will Fuller will not be with Houston anymore. I figured Cooks would be the de facto one in Houston. But we didn't figure that Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson, I'm not going to say anything I'll regret. Deshaun Watson would be in some legal trouble. And likely to miss some time, if not all the time in 2021. And if that's the case, if that is the case, Brandon Cooks is going to be the wide receiver one for like a fucking quarterback three. And that's not what you want. You don't want a slot wide receiver for a fucking third string quarterback. I don't even know who else is on the Houston roster. Let's check that out, actually. Houston Texans. Uh, what'd you end up getting? Uh, a little hard to pull and, uh, skinny. From... No, I'm straight. Like I said, we don't drink our calories unless we're drinking. If you you want to spike that, I'll drink it. <laughs> not yet. No, not till 5 p.m. You trying to go to Central Park maybe in a little bit? Okay. We're going to take Tony Pollard. Um, that is probably a that, – that's a pick that I'm, I don't normally indulge in. He's someone who – I don't like taking – players in best ball that can just continuously put up zero zeros for you and that's pretty much the case for Pollard unless he gets hurt so if you ever have to end a piece of analysis with if he gets hurt it's probably not the player you need to be drafting not in single digit rounds so basically I just took a player and then shit on myself I'm sorry but let's shit a little bit more on George Kenny Gainwell huh you fucking moron now uh Gainwell's uh G listen Kenny Gainwell is a guy who prolific season in 2019 Really, really, really crazy season. Over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. Over 600 yards through the air. He's a really good pass-catching running back. He was a, a wide receiver converted to a running back. He was the one who who kept in. You know, all the the fucking analysis all of 2018, all of 2019 offseason. Antonio Gibson only had 35 carries. You know why? It's because Kenny Gainwell was their starting running back. Gainwell's pretty undersized, though. He's He just clipped over 200 pounds, and that's kind of my issue with him. Like, we're all trying to push him to be this fucking workhorse and like, oh, you know, we can look at the, uh, we can, we could look at guys like Austin Eckler, but Austin Eckler is, is one in, one in a hundred, one in 200 running backs. And Austin Eckler wasn't Austin Eckler until Melvin Gordon decided to hold out. You think if Melvin Gordon didn't hold out the first four games of the season, we would have ever seen Austin Eckler take a workhorse role. I just think Gainwell's a guy who's going to be drafted to play in a specific role on a team, and that could be good. I see more J.D. McKissick when I watch Kenny Gainwell than I see Austin Eckler, okay? So when we're talking about best ball, that, that could be the case, but I still think there's a lot of things that need to break right for Gainwell to like really give you value, uh, especially outside of – if this was full PPR, this was full point per reception, I would probably value him a little bit more, but I do value the guy that was picked right behind him in Trey Sermon. I like Trey Sermon a lot, man. He's someone who's grown on me. The more I watch him play, um, his pro day came back really good. He had really good burst and agility. Let's pull his shit up right now, actually. Oh, yeah. We never figured out what the Houston Texans depth chart was looking like. Definitely ain't a fucking snack. Unless you're a vegan. This shit probably looks pretty tasty to you. Oh, they got Tyrod as their, as their two? I'm not even excited. Listen, like, people getting excited about Tyrod last year were already at fault. They're like, there was no, he's old as shit. He, everyone's like, oh, he's got a rushing floor. Like, not really. The dude can barely, like, make it out of the fucking pocket anymore. I'm sorry. And his, his arm is never good. So if he's not, like, 28-year-old Tyrod Taylor, where he's able to actually bust off, like, 25-yard runs, which I don't think is the case anymore, I'm not getting excited. It's good, good to know that it's Tyrod Taylor and not, like, fucking Mike Glennon's younger brother or some shit. Okay. Uh, who were we bringing up? Trey Sermon. That's who it was. Ooh, ooh, we need to work on a little UX here. That's their, that's their bread and butter too. 
Player profile is usually on the fucking groovy side of the UX. Okay. Uh, Pollard, Waddle, Gainwell, Sermon. Yeah, we'll bring up Sermon in a second. Gus Edwards. I really like Gus, too, uh, as like a running back if, if you need to kind of pad the guys beneath him because it's just him and Dobbins, and he was already getting double-digit touches last year. Running backs. Jamal Williams, J.D. McKissick. Nah, see, there's no running backs left, which is why I kind of want to even go – like, rather than taking one of these mid-round wide receivers, I might just go real heavy on running backs in most of these best ball drafts. Parker, Rager, Martin Jones, Rashad. I still love Rashad Bateman, bro. I really do. We're going to take Rashad Bateman only because time's about to go off again. Fuck. Fuck. See, this is what I'm saying. When I do these best ball drafts again, don't look at my team. My team's going to fucking stink because I don't pay attention. Just listen to what I'm saying. Listen to the flavor that I'm kicking into your ear holes. Trey Sermon. Oh, oh, best comp came out as Damian Harris, huh? That I like. That I like. We already talked about Damian Harris and and my affinity towards him. I thought Trey Sermon's comp was going to come out to be like a, a Josh Jacobs or a James Robinson or or a Kareem Hunt. Even he's an elusive guy. He's like he's not someone who flashes on the film, but he just gets it done. Like he makes guys miss when he's on the field through one way or another, whether it's power, whether it's elusiveness. Like he does all that stuff really, really well. And he's got the size, six foot two fifteen. So a lot of the times when when a player comes in, like you see like four six six forty yard dash, and you're gonna say that's too slow for the NFL. But I mean, you look at Josh Jacobs had like the same forty time. Damian Harris had a slow forty time. Kareem Hunt had a slow forty time. Gene Robinson. Here's the thing: the NFL don't give a fuck about a slow forty time if you have NFL size. And Trey Sermon's got that at two fifteen. So um, someone's gonna be. I I I hope Sermon gets drafted a little bit higher than uh, than people in fantasy are giving him credit for. So he's personally moving up to probably my. Um, my running back four in the class. It's been a long road to get there. It's winding. He probably started as like the running back seven, but this this profile I really really like with the with the burst and agility because the burst you know put him put him in an offense with a good line. He's getting through the line. He's gonna he's he's gonna be that guy that doesn't break away the home run play. Neither do any of those guys that I just named. Uh, but he picks up those chunk yards of, of six at a time, eight at a time, eighteen at a time. The agility is great to see because he's he's got very good vision. So when he sees the fucking hole, the agility score. Uh, allows him to get there. So I'm, I'm really moving up on, on Trey Sermon. If you want all of our rookie rankings, you want all of our rookie rankings, make sure you go over to bdge.store. bdge.store. The Rookie Dynasty Draft Guide is available. We've got player profilers up for, player profiles, up, really in-depth ones up for like 60 of the fucking re- uh, fantasy relevant rookies right now. Bunch of exclusive shit on there that we won't be putting on the YouTubes or posting via our blog. Um, so go check that out. BDGE dot store. I'm actually going to, you know what? I'm going to set up a promo. I'm going to set up a promo for all y'all to buy the rookie dynasty guide and the promo code is going to be underdog. All right. Told you it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful marriage, beautiful friendship. Uh, that'll get you a 10% off or 20%. I don't know. I haven't decided what the fucking discount's going to be yet, but by the time you watch this, it, it will be engraved in the description. Uh, tight ends. No, did we already take two quarterbacks? No. Uh, we're going to go with Matt Ryan. I don't know why I did that. <sighs> Fuck. I hate myself. Oh, but then again, if I just follow my own rule, you know, if you ever feel shitty about yourself, just know that George is out here taking Odell Beckham in the sixth round. Thank you, George. Appreciate your hard work. And I appreciate your terrible drafting. <sighs> Stay hydrated. Oh, you're taking all the rookies, huh? I don't want to turn this into a uh, an entire like rookie analysis draft, but every every Tuesday I go in depth on someone in the rookie class. So if you're in Dynasty, if you got your rookie drafts coming up, make sure you go check out uh, my my Tuesday series. Don't say the car's topless. Some of my more in depth dives on the rookie class. Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby becomes a little bit interesting because we got Stafford coming in who has targeted tight end. I'm not really like. I don't know. I, I don't think I've come around to being one of the guys that like says, oh, this quarterback just targets tight ends. I feel like if you're a good tight end, you're going to get fucking targeted. Tyler Higby is, I don't know. He hasn't really proven to be a great tight end. Him and Jared Goff had a very good chemistry. Obviously, they like, lived together at one point. So if he wasn't doing it with Jared Goff, like I'm a little hesitant to say he's going to do it with Matt Stafford. Plus, they bring in Deshaun Jackson. They got Cam Akers, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. So I don't know. Higby's not a guy I'm too excited about. I'd grab, you know, this is the cool part about best ball. You get to really diverse diversify and you don't got to pick the weeks that you start players right so if you take let's see what let's see what alan's working with what's the rest of his roster look like so tyler higby was his one that i don't know if i can get behind but had you taken like if he was my number two right i had taken hawkinson 
And then you take, oh, it's new Jared Goff tight end target. Uh, and then old Jared Goff tight end target. Here's a good thing about that. Like one of these, one of these is going to work out because either Jared Goff stinks or Jared Goff's good. And if he's good, that means TJ Hawkins is going to eat. If he stinks, that means Higby gets an upgrade with Stafford there now, you know? This is the kind of out of the box thinking you get here. Also, if y'all are enjoying the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, please. Please, please, God, before YouTube fires me. Let them know you like what we're talking about over here. Alan, let's see what Alan does now. Al Alan, how old are you? I feel like I've interacted with you on some social platform before, and I low-key feel like you're set 14 or 16 or something. But, like, Alan is a very old man's name. But also, I feel like Alan, the old Alan, is like A-L-L-E-N. What is A-L-A-N? Are you an alien? I feel like you're an alien. You just left out the I. Swap the E. We got aliens drafting with us. Love that. Terrace Marshall, he's basically a fucking alien. Terrace Marshall's a beast. Denzel Mims. I almost feel like Terrace Marshall is this year's Denzel Mims. Denzel Mims is a guy that I love in the 12th round. Good pick, Georgie. I think you just picked him because you got him on your dynasty team too. Uh, Denzel Mims, I uh, oh, I guess they they got a new quarterback coming in, but that could be a good thing. I kind of like Zach Wilson, man. The more that dynasty Twitter hates on Zach Wilson, the more I like him. And Denzel Mims is just an absolute freak athlete that uh, that without Brashad Perriman there, I think he'll he'll continue to get more and more involved and, and have a chance to take over as the alpha. Anytime you can get a guy in the 12th round that has the upside of taking over the alpha role in his offense, I think he's he's definitely a good uh, gamble. Cole Beasley. I need another running back probably. Naeem Hines. Okay, I'm going back to fucking J.D. McKissick, man. I'm going back to McKissick, man. I think he's one of those guys that just like – won a really big game for me last year and now i'm like forever indebted to him like i shouldn't like him i should not like no one should like jd mckissick but he had that touchdown catch in like week 16 that won me a championship and like i'm forever i just think he's a good player like most people don't realize you know they're like oh antonio gibson great pass catcher he's eventually going to phase jd mckissick out of the uh, out of the offense in uh in Washington and Jamie McKissick's not going to catch any more passes man like I gotta sh I, I gotta tell you man JD McKissick I don't think y'all realize that he's not just like a decent third down back he was a motherfucking wide receiver in college look at the receiving numbers 103 catches 82 catches 52 52 and he started playing more running back here Okay, 7.7 .7 yards per carry, 12.8 yards per carry. Okay, maybe I'm getting out of control because it's only 18, 9, 18 attempts. But the case remains. He's really versatile. He's really efficient. And he's a really fucking good athlete. I don't think J.D. McKissick is going anywhere. Okay, so um, I still think he's going to be a third down back, which leads me to the point. Like, what are you doing, with Antonio Gibson? I think he went at the 201 in this draft, like the 204 or something like that. Might be a little bit too spicy for me, man. Might be a little bit too spicy for me. There, Steve, call him back. Nope, that is my accountant. We're going to get back to you on that one, my guy. We got we got bigger fucking money moves to make over here. Naeem Hines, absolutely hate that. Cole Beasley, Antonio Brown. I'm not rolling the dice on A. Brown yet because he has not. He's not signed yet, so he's another one who might be out of the league. Like, I don't think if, if he doesn't re-sign with Tampa Bay, I feel like he's probably not going to play in the league this year. Could be an extremely cold take come, like, four days from now. But I don't know. I just don't like to risk that on my best ball teams. Like, you only get so many roster spots, right? Every roster spot counts because, you know, even if it's a shitty player, like, there's a good chance that he, he finds his way into your lineup. Like, the three weeks that he does well, the three weeks of the year that that player does well, he's an important part of your roster. So you take out one of your 18 players, you know, a wide receiver who might not play this year. And that's, that's, that's a big, that's a big fucking lead. The rest of your league mates are, are getting on you. Baker Mayfield, Justin Fields. I like Justin Fields as a, uh, as a pick in best ball too. Anyone that can, anyone that can run the ball at quarterback is fine with me this late in the draft. I think Justin Fields got a great arm as well. Average like 40 rushing yards a game at Ohio state. So he's going to give you a nice, nice floor at quarterback. I guess it will depend on where he goes though. Cause if he does, land in atlanta if he lands in new england uh either of those spots there's a good chance that he is sitting it for if not the entire year you know just a couple games at least and that's gonna hurt you for best ball a little bit a little bit we're about to be on a cloak uh devin singletary there's a chance buffalo doesn't go to the running back early and they just let singletary and zach moss do their thing again i'll tell you what i kind of like Aguilar here a lot he's like he's just he's the number one he's just straight up the number one him and brashad perriman both the number ones in their respective offenses uh so Aguilar coming off a big, big fucking year, career year, 896 yards, eight tugs. 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't think people are uh, respecting Mr. Aguilar enough. Even if it is Cam. Even if it is Cam, who can't throw the fucking ball anymore. Like, he, he's going to be guaranteed 100 targets. And I'll take that. Oh, I missed Steve's FaceTime call. My FaceTime just don't come through no more. It's quite disrespectful. It's just like half the time it does, half the time it doesn't. I just look at my phone and it just says, missed FaceTime call. But I know it didn't happen because it would have popped up on my screen. Underdogs playing fucking voodoo witchcraft on me. Always. All right. We are about to enter the 14th round. I tell you what, when I do these videos, I really got to like fucking charge up. We're in it for the long haul on these bad boys, which is what makes it fun. Here's here's a cool thing also about Underdog. They have slow drafts and fast drafts. So you could do the ones like this where it's 30 seconds a pick. So if you're just bored and you jump into one, you know, you could do that for the next half hour, 45 minutes. If you're sitting in the waiting room, waiting to get your fucking vaccine, you're waiting to get your, your, your gonorrhea medication, whatever, you, you know, listen, I don't judge here. Whatever you're doing, this is a perfect way to kill 30, 45 minutes. If you want to do slow drafts, my favorite thing to do, what I typically do when I'm not filming these for y'all, is I'll jump in like four to five slow drafts. And I want to say they're they're either four or eight hours between picks. So it's fun to jump in a bunch of them. And then like every half hour or hour or so, you'll be on the clock. So you don't have to press. You don't have to be like, oh, fuck, I got to make my pick right now. You don't have to be freaking out and letting the fucking computer auto pick Adam Thielen for you. You know, I don't know if that's ever happened to anyone. It hasn't happened to me. So you know, I'd imagine it's disrespectful to your heart if it does, but it's neither here nor there. What the fuck was I blabbering about? Um, I do the slow drafts. Yeah. So this, you can do fast drafts. You can do slow drafts. You can do 12 people in it. You could do all the way down to three. You can do like a three person fast draft on underdog, which is really fucking fun, actually, because you're like, oh, my God, my team is so stacked. Then you look at everybody's team. It's like it's wildly stacked as well. So it's just kind of fun. They're fun. It's all over the place, okay? So make sure you download the Underdog app. Use code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks. Let them know we sent you. It's a big help to the brand. It really, 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 really is. Plus, we're just trying to build Underdog to the fucking Jupiter. So regardless, uh, just downloading the app and playing a little bit. It's rising tides. Rising tides, my friend. All right, we're at the 14-6. Jameis Winston, Sam Darnold, Deshaun Watson, Interesting run of quarterbacks. Anthony McFarland, I don't hate uh I don't hate the pick of Anthony McFarland, but again, I think Najee Harris. Actually, I do hate it because I picked Najee Harris, so fuck off, George. We're gonna go with Brashad Perriman here because he's the default wide receiver one in Detroit right now. Uh probably until they pick Jamar Chase. But there's a very good chance that Jamar Chase goes off the board at five to Cincinnati. Maybe fucking Atlanta gets spicy and takes Jamar. Who knows what the fuck's gonna happen in the NFL draft? That's the case, and you know Detroit ends up with Devontae Smith, or they go with Mika Parsons, or they don't take a wide receiver in the first round. It's wheels up for Bashad Perriman. It's probably not a sentence that should ever come out of anyone's mouth. Wheels up for Bashad Perriman, but hey, you can do worse in the 14th round. What's this guy texting me right now? The 1099. Did you include that in your business income, or is that a separate income? What? I was doing my. Uh, I was doing the rookie profile right up on Jalen Darden. I know he's like everybody everybody loves Jalen Darden as a sleeper this year. Straight up Jalen Darden could I, that Arizona offense would be nice if they draft. Like I don't think Jalen Darden is going to do that well if he goes anywhere besides like Arizona or Kansas City. I know, you know, he's like if you ever need another reason to fade him, he's Animal's favorite sleeper. So probably shouldn't even talk on him to be honest, but he's someone that I think will excel in the slot. He's so fucking good with the ball in his hands. Um, can also excel deep. So I think he fits, you know, in that Arizona offense where they run multiple slots and they, they got D hop on the outside, Christian Kirk on the inside. I mean, I guess AJ green on the other side and then uh, another slot wide receiver. Jalen Darden would be a nice little, a nice little, uh, counter piece to Christian Kirk. Cam Newton at the 14, 11. I kind of really, really like that. If they don't go with the quarterback in the first round this year, then cam is going to be a really good fantasy pick. They got a much better weapons than Hunter Henry, Jonah Smith, Nelson Aguilar coming in. Uh, I would, I'd imagine they take a couple more weapons in the NFL draft. So Cam's going to, yeah, listen, Cam Cam down here is one of the best value picks in fantasy right now at quarterback. Four rounds of Hoimening. We have two quarterbacks, four running backs, seven wide receivers, and a tight end. Yeah, like I said, I typically stack up the wide receiver position. Um Let's see what running backs we got. I'll, I'll probably grab Devin Singletary here if he's available. I really don't want Jamal Williams. I really don't want 
Like if you're going to take a timeshare back, which everybody in this section of the draft is, at least do it on a good team. Like what is Jamal Williams going to fucking do this year? Devin Singletary, at least on a, you know, a Super Bowl contending team, there's a, there's a chance that, you know, Zach Moss gets hurt or something and Devin Singletary becomes a 20 touch per game guy. There's a chance that Devin Singletary becomes a 20 touch. He is a 20 touch per game guy with Zach Moss not hurt. That's what I like about him in the 15th round. There's like no other running backs that are even worth considering. It feels like maybe James White. Gio went to Gio went to Tampa Bay, right? Am I crazy? Gio Bernard. He got cut and then. Yeah, Bucks turned to Gio because of running back drops. Yeah, yeah. Fournette and Rojo. But yeah, that was that was an absolute fucking killer for Rojo. Eh, for both of them, I guess. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm not drafting any of the Tampa Bay Bucks running backs outside of probably needs to be like eighth eighth round the earliest. I think about Fournette, just how we finish the year, but like probably more so double digit rounds. Not drafting Geo. I would think about RJ or Fournette in the 10th round or later. Whew, we are losing steam here, boys. I got to grab another tight end soon. Who we got? Hooper? Hooper was pretty fucking good um, when he came back from his injury. We'll throw him in the queue. Cole Komet. Nah, I'm going to pass on that. Ertz. Nope. All right. Let's just hope we get Austin Hooper. Blake Jarwin's coming back from a serious injury as well. So I don't know how much stock I want to put into that. Apparently, the Cowboys are looking into trading up for Kyle Pitts. That would be out of control. That offense would be out of fucking control. Lamb, Gallup, Pitts, Cooper, Zeke. Jesus Christ. It would single-handedly give Snacks a heart attack. Do we get nah? We don't need a third quarterback because our quarterbacks are nice right here. Hurts and Matt Ryan. That's how I usually choose. I'll just stack up wide receivers and then either go with three quarterbacks or three tight ends, depending on what the stronger of the two positions is. So hopefully we can get Hooper there. He'll be a touchdown guy. That's what I like about Hooper. It's like, listen, he's not gonna put up, he's not gonna be a PPR guy. But anytime a tight end ends up falling into the end zone, he becomes a top ten tight end for that week. I think Hooper, Hooper will do that a decent amount of times this year. Again, I think the offense is going to be super efficient. Baker's not going to be a high-volume guy. Odell Beckham might have 200 receiving yards. So Austin Hooper probably has a lot of yards left over for him. Top 13 scoring offense last year. I don't think most people know that. It was the first year under Stefanski. Offensive line was fantastic. Number one run blocking line. Pro I think they were like number six or seven pass blocking line. Um, So it, it, it's wheels up for Cleveland. It is wheels up for Cleveland and that offense. And I think that means good things for Hoop Bell. Hoop's going to hoop, bro. Hoop hoop will hoop. Wow, Georgie. Really uh, really slacking on the wide receivers. Let's see what fucking sleepers he's got up his sleeve here. He's going to pick something dumb. I bet he goes like Traquan Smith or some shit. Marlon Matt. Uh, what? What are you doing? You know you have to start three wide receivers. George. 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 Have I taught you anything? And you're 65 years of life. Gage Reynolds. Ah, Reynolds? I don't hate you. I already have A.J. Brown, huh? Uh, We're going to go with Josh Reynolds just because I feel like he is automatically the number two in Tennessee. And that's an offense I want some pieces of. I'm a little bit scared that Arthur Smith leaving will impact the Titans offense a little bit more than most people realize. Great for my Falcons. But I don't know. Much like Cleveland, they're a really high play action uh, heavy team, good run blocking line, but Tennessee's pass blocking line is nothing like Cleveland's or nothing like their run blocking line. So they are a, a run heavy team, obviously. And Josh Reynolds probably stinks and that was probably a terrible pick. So the third spot in Tampa Bay is pretty interesting. If they don't re-sign Antonio Brown, I wonder if there's any news on Antonio Brown. Let's go into the Twitter world. Let's go into the Twitter world. Let's put our fucking brains in a blender. All right. So nothing on Antonio Brown yet. Uh, so it seems like they're not going to re-sign him. I'm, I'm imagining Brady's pushing for him, dude. But um, I'm imagining Brady's pushing for him. But if not, it's going to be a toss-up between Scotty Miller and Tyler Johnson. So I don't mind kind of switching on and off between those two guys in the 17th, 18th round of best ball drafts if you didn't already draft eight wide receivers because I already did that. I need to draft the tight end. Fuck, I should have drafted the tight end last. I had the chance to do it. I forgot about Austin Hooper. Ooh, Dan Arnold went to Carolina. I didn't even know that. Buffalo did not sign a tight end. I kind of like Dawson Knox, but he kind of is like stinks at football. He's just wildly athletic. Fun to talk about, but actually but actually stinks. I might grab some Blake Jarwin here. 
I think I'm going to do it. I'm not going to blag, grab Jake, bar, bl- jar, fuck, fucking, fucking Fitz. Fitz, you got me in a blender, brother. It's funny that you could tell this time of the off season. I'm just, I, I just haven't done any research on these late round guys. So I have nothing good to just fucking yell at you about. In the 17th round, Donald Parham, no. They signed Jared Cook. OJ Howard stinks. Christopher Hernan stinks. Is there anyone good? Like, is there any good tight end in the NFL anymore? Harrison Bryant I like, but like, you know what? Fuck it. Because you took Austin Hooper, we're going to take Harrison Bryant. I'm proclaiming Harrison Bryant as a tight end one in Cleveland. Game, set, match. Let's see what notifications we got on Twitter. Who's yelling at me now? Jack, you got to be quicker than that, bro. Oh, the people want to play. The people want to play. Maybe we'll just rip off like 17. That's what we're going to do. Over the next week, I'm going to rip off probably 30 to 50 drafts, which is going to cost me a lot of money. Fuck, it's all the money in my account. We're going to do it, though. So make sure you're signed up. Make sure you got some money in the account. Make sure you are putting our promo code in when you do sign up. BDGE, all right? You're going to sign up and you throw $10 in. They're going to ask you, hey, who sent you? Was it Google? Was it SEO? Was it a fucking billboard? You're going to say, no, it was my friend Nicholas. He works at BDGE, and that's where you're going to tell them, okay? It helps the brand. It helps me. makes me feel better about myself, which is something I need after these drafts typically. Sign up and make sure you are. One of three things. Following me on Twitter, at Nick Ercolano. Signed up for the Discord through our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash BDGE, and or signed up for our texting platform, which is completely free. You know, follow me on Twitter, texting platform, completely free. Uh, the number is, I don't know what the number is off the top of my head, but it's in the description down below. So just text that number and you'll be signed up and I'll be shooting you out best ball draft invites whenever we go live. As long as you used our promo code when you signed up. If you didn't, I'll know. You think I won't know, but I'll know. I work closely with the team. They tell me who signs up using the codes. So if you try to fucking be smart, try to be smart and get around it, it won't work. I'm going to block you. I'm going to call the police to go to your house and break in. We're going to live stream it. We're going to, what, what they used to do, didn't people used to do that, like playing video games with people and they'd like, didn't they call it like swatting or something? Would like call the SWAT team on other people while they're live streaming and watch them break in the door? That was some real fucked up shit. Looks fun. It'd be, imagine like a SWAT team just came in through that fucking window right there. Good stuff. Good stuff, Nick. Okay. Let's see, Rashad Penny. No. They just resigned Chris Carson. James. See, James White at the end of the 17th. Don't hate Mike Boone. Don't hate that either. Philip Lindsay gone. Boston Scott. Philly just resigned Jordan Howard, which uh, actually makes me feel good. I thought they were going to sign a bigger name free agent, and now they're almost definitely not drafting a running back to compete with Miles Sanders. So, bigger concern there is obviously just the offense overall. They're not going to move the ball a lot. Well, not going to score a lot, at least. And their offensive line terrible absolutely i should draft a third tight end because my first two tight ends stink that's what i'll do so we ended up with two quarterbacks we'll read the team down in a second is jimmy graham like still on the actual fucking bears or is he not dead yet we're gonna go with dawson knox i really like this dude for no good literally no good reason all right so here's a final team we've got jalen hurts matt ryan Derrick Henry, Najee Harris, Tony Pollard, J.D. McKissick, Devin Singletary. Ooh, those running backs are big yikes. Wide receivers, though. A.J. Brown, CeeDee Lamb, Adam Thielen, Tyler Boyd, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, Rashad Perriman, Josh Reynolds, tight ends, T.J. Hawkinson, Harrison Bryant, Dawson Knox. I will be able to – I believe I can share this draft. Uh, I can believe I can share the entire draft board through this link. So I'll throw that in the description. I'll throw that in the top of the comments section as well. For you guys to fuck around with and, and check out if you would like to. It's the full board. Interesting shit. So so again, y'all, like Underdog has the sharpest ADP. So even if you're not playing on here, you can still go to underdogfantasy.com. Look at, uh, I want to say the rankings, maybe. Let's see. Is it under rankings? Yeah, rankings, NFL. Here we go. Yep. And they got the ADP right here for you. So you can download them. You could uh, upload your own rankings onto the site itself. So the fact that all these best ball drafts are $3 to play in lets you know that people are taking that shit seriously, lets you know that the ADP is, you know, definitely the sharpest in the industry. It's the only place that you can get borderline season long ADP this early uh, and have it continue throughout the entire summer. So we're going to be doing these every single week. We'll, we'll do one a week on YouTube, fully featured. Y'all will be on television if you click the link quickly. Like I, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, that shit fills up in about 0.2 seconds. 
So you got to be quick on the trigger. You got to keep itchy fingers, itchy Twitter fingers. If you're signed up for all three things, our Discord, our texting platform, and on Twitter, you got a better chance. Three times as many. You're at three times in the giveaway. But make sure you go download Underdog. Link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. I love y'all. And we'll see you tomorrow on Fade That Public. Good riddance.